What's going on, everybody? I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Sintel Kawai. Hey, what's cracking, baby? We're watching John Wick Pitch Meeting Revisited. So if you're unfamiliar, if you're uninitiated with this, basically Ryan George goes back to uh, a pitch meeting he did a while ago. I mean, you see the pitch meeting, and but like the bookends of it is an introduction talking about how he did this sometime back, and then afterwards he kind of does a review on his own pitch meeting, which is for me fascinating to watch. So hopefully you guys are as intrigued as I am. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, pretty please vote this up, let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. My subscribe button up button, subscribe to pitch meeting, subscribe to Sinzel Kawai. Links are in the description below. Here we go. Hi everybody, it's Ryan George from The Thing You're Currently Watching. Please enjoy this pitch <laughs> meeting for John Wick that I made a couple Quick. of years ago. And then if you like, you can stick around afterwards because I'm going to talk about it and also stuff and answer questions and whatnot. While you're doing that, I'm going to draw a dog. So, you have a movie for me? <laughs> yes, sir, I do. And I think this would be the perfect vehicle for Keanu Reeves. Uh, well, actually, we make movies, not cars, but thanks so much for coming in. <laughs> no, 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 it's like an expression, right? Like a, like a star vehicle? Oh, a star vehicle. Yeah. Like a spaceship. No. Oh, well, we don't make spaceships. Ships, but thanks so much for coming in. Okay, I have a movie that would be great for Keanu Reeves. Oh, well, you should have led with that. What's the movie? Okay, good. So it's called John Wick, right? And it follows this guy named John Wick. That explains the title, making a lot of sense <laughs> so far. Yeah, and so at the beginning of the movie, his wife dies. Oh, what does she die of? She dies of being the wife of the main character <laughs> in an action movie. Oh, yeah, that can be deadly. <laughs> yeah, so she arranges to have a puppy delivered to John so he can have something to love after she's gone. Very adorable. Yeah, and so he starts to take care of this dog, right? He feeds it cereal because he doesn't have dog food yet and he takes it on a joy ride around an airport and probably gives it some whiplash. What? But while he's out, he goes to the gas station, right? And this spoiled Russian gangster kid Yosef wants to buy his car from him, but he's like, no, nah, it's not for sale. Okay. And in Russian, Yosef says everything has a price and then John answers back in Russian, so Yosef is like, what? Oh, he's mad. He's upset. He's very mad. He's so mad that that night him and his buddies break into John's house. How do they find out where he lives? Unclear, and so they beat him up and they steal his car. <laughs> well, as long as the dog is okay. And they kill his dog. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> Okay, some people better die for that. Oh, don't you worry, they will. That's the whole plot of the movie. John Wick is gonna kill people for an hour and a half because his dog was murdered? That's right, sir. I'm absolutely okay with that, to be honest. You can't mess with dogs. No, sir, you can't. People you like them much more than they like humans. They certainly do. So what happens next? Well, Yosef tries to get some new plates for John's car from this guy, Aurelio, and Aurelio slaps him in the face. Oh, he does? Yeah, and so Aurelio gets a call from Yosef's father, Vigo, who's like the head of a criminal enterprise, and he's like, hey, I heard you hit my son. What's up with that? And what does Aurelio say? Well, he's like, yeah, I did, sir, because your son stole John Wick's car and killed his dog. And so Vigo's like, oh. Oh, why is this guy so scared of John? Well, it turns out that John is like this amazing retired assassin, right? The Russians call him Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga? What does that mean? Cool, it means man. the boogeyman, sir. You don't have to look it up. It means the boogeyman. Okay, it says here in Slavic folklore, Baba Yaga is a supernatural being who appears as a deformed old woman with drooping breasts. What? So how droopy are John's <laughs> breasts exactly? Just say when so I know. Oh, I was so sure it was Boogeyman. Okay, yeah, I think that's Babeka. Oh, dang it. <laughs> well, I already wrote Baba Yaga. Well, it's probably fine. Okay, good. I, I did not know that. I, I did not know that, and I cannot unlearn that now. These kinds of things happen all the time. I mean, famously in Star Wars, um, doesn't like Han, uh, Han Solo say something like a jumping jumping 12 parsecs or something like that in parsec? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, that's parsec not how you would a, ever use that term. It's a unit of, like, measurement for farmland or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I forget yeah, exactly yeah. what it is, but, like, stuff like that happens all the time. It's fine it's well, you you get the context the context is <laughs> that word equals scary guy to like reprint this and everything yeah no don't even worry about it so what does the droopy breasted witch do next well so Vigo <laughs> sends a bunch of guys to his house to kill him right okay and so John has to kill them all using gun fu uh, I think that's pronounced kung fu no it's not kung fu it's a mix of jujitsu and judo and uh you know shooting people in the Actually, face oh it is yeah so he <laughs> Actually, it's called Gunkata, and it was originated by a little project called, uh, oh my gosh, what was that after Matrix? What were we just talking about? talking about Tate Diggs and Christian Bale. And, um, I'm going to let you struggle on this oh one. I know exactly God, what you're talking about, too. I, I 
can't remember the name of it. What it's called it? Equilibrium. Equilibrium. There we go. Equilibrium was the but, one no, that but coined okay, gun kata. Gun fu is an equally a, a usable term as well, though. Like, okay. it's, they're interchangeable. Gun kata, gun fu. Kung fu. No, it's not kung fu. It's a mix of jujitsu and judo and, uh, you know, shooting people in the face. Oh, it is. Yeah, so he's going to shoot a bunch <laughs> of these assassins point blank in the face and also stab some of them, but mostly shoot them point blank in the face. Uh, that sounds intense. Oh, it will be, sir. And we're going to keep that going throughout the movie all the way up until, I'd say, the high 70s. What, Fahrenheit? No, corpses. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're also going to get glimpses of this, like, assassin underworld that John was a part of. Like, they have a whole system in place. Oh, they do? Yeah, like, the cops don't mess with them. They have these little gold coins they use as currency. They even have their own hotel. Oh, please explain this all to me in excruciating detail. Yeah. Actually, I feel like it might be kind of <laughs> nice to just hint at the mythology rather than shoving it down people's throats. Can we at least throw a love brilliant. interest in there for him? No, goodness, no. Hey, you're making it really tough for me to ruin this thing. Okay, what happens next? Well, John checks in at this assassin hotel, and there's like a code of honor there. You can't kill anyone while you're in the hotel. Well, so people must get shot all the time walking out the front door. Probably, so he checks in at this hotel. <laughs> Uh, that's true. There must be like a perimeter rule as well of some yeah. kind, right? This is just, just assume. I haven't seen the trailer yet for the Continental. Uh, I haven't either. You excited about it? I don't know, man. This is, I mean, it could be cool. It could be cool. Hell, and then he finds out that Yosef is at a nightclub, so he heads over there. Oh, and what happens there? Oh, uh, pow, 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 pow. Were those heads being shot? Those were heads being shot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> pow, 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 pow. Yeah, so he shoots a guy in the head. <laughs> You may not realize this, but that was a play on him always saying, wow, 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 wow. And so he said, pow, 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 pow. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that went right over my head. <laughs> ah. Ed, he shoots another guy in the head. He also shoots a guy in the head, drowns a guy and snaps his neck, actually. Oh, mixing things up is tight. Yeah, and so anyway, Yosef <laughs> manages to get away, so John goes back to the hotel, but an assassin lady tries to kill him. I thought you weren't allowed to do that at the hotel. You're not? No, but somebody offered her a lot of money to break the rules. Oh, people can be bribed into breaking the rules. That doesn't seem like a safe place to stay at all. Well, anyway, he survives, so yeah. it all works out. Sure. Well, okay then. And then he finds out that Vigo runs a church as a front for some illegal stuff, so he blows all that stuff up. Oh, why does he do that. Well, that lures Vigo and his men out, so John gets a couple more headshots, but then he gets hit by a car. Oh, no. Yeah, not good, no. So then Vigo has some of his guys suffocate him with a plastic bag. Well, it's gonna be tough for him to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, see, John's friend Marcus snipes one of the guys through a window, and then John manages to kill the other one. But isn't Vigo standing right there? Oh, no, he left. He left? Yeah, no, he figured his men can handle it, so, you know, he took off. He's been trying to kill John this whole movie. He doesn't stick around for a minute to see if the job gets done. <laughs> That's what we're going with, because the movie's not done yet. Well, okay then. So then John catches up with Vigo, and Vigo's like, okay, okay, I'll tell you where my son is, just don't kill me. And John agrees to that. That's what we're going with, because the movie's not done yet. Well, okay then. So then John kills Yosef in like two seconds. <laughs> oh, well, straight to the point. Yeah, so that's all done, but then Vigo kills Marcus, so John needs to get some more revenge. Oh, he does. Yeah, so he tracks down Vigo and kills his men, and that's when we have the movie's big showdown. So what's the big showdown? A fist fight with a 60-year-old. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is this guy ripped or something? Not particularly. <laughs> Nobody puts it like that, though, right? <laughs> Isn't there some car stuff involved? I haven't watched the movie in a while, but I thought there was some car stuff involved. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit of chicken. Yeah, in the rain. Oh, the okay. Is this guy ripped or something? Not particularly, no. Is he like a, like a great martial artist? Yeah. Oh, okay. So then John manages to kill this guy, and then he finds a dog, and that's it. We're done. Doggy. So what do you think? Well, I think it sounds like a lot <laughs> of fun. Thanks. I just feel like there's probably a big audience of Matrix fans out there that would love to see Keanu do some more action stuff, you know? That's a good idea, and if it works, we could kick things up a notch in the sequel. How would we do that? I don't know. We'll figure something out. <laughs> I don't love how this turned Thank out. You. It looks like a creepy Five Nights at Freddy's kind of vibe. Yes. So that John Wick pitch meeting, funny enough, that's one that I initially skipped. I remember telling oh, the wow. screenwriter channel manager, it's just, it's not gonna work for this one. And that happens sometimes when movies are focused. A lot of the problems that I make fun of come from things that are obviously studio notes or trying to cram too much stuff in and too many storylines and whatnot. John Wick was just the most straightforward plot. It's just 
his dog died and so he killed everyone. I'm glad I went back and gave it another <laughs> shot because some people tell me that this is their favorite, that, that dog moment is one of their favorite moments in all of pitch meetings. Because that's how we all felt watching John Wick when the dog died and that's what made the whole movie so satisfying. You don't mess with dogs. I know if anyone did anything to my dog, I would immediately track down <laughs> John Leguizamo. And also John once I discover the whole <laughs> John Leguizamo. <laughs> <laughs> so once I discovered the whole Baba Yaga thing, that was like, okay, I could probably make a pitch meaning for this. One thing I really <laughs> liked about the original John Wick is that they hinted at this bigger world without diving into it too much. And that's something that I pointed out in the pitch meeting. Question time. Mm -hmm. Question one, how many people do you have on your production team for scripting, videography, editing, publishing, etc.? Okay. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Huh. I mean, just me, baby. Sorry yeah. for calling you baby. You're probably a full grown person. Yeah, no, writing, shooting, editing all takes place in this very room. Sometimes during the writing, I'm lying horizontal on the couch and messing up my back. When I'm 70, I'm gonna look back at this time with a lot of, you know, oh, that was a great time, but I'm gonna be hunched over and curse my past self for my <laughs> writing posture. What I actually don't do in regards to pitch meeting is the publishing and the managing of the actual channel. That is still within the Screen Rant bubble. There's a channel manager and everything. I just do all the creative stuff and then I blah, and then they blah. And then that's kind of the process of how you get the blah, blah, blah. Question two, how does your approach differ when doing a pitch meeting for a movie versus a TV series? Well, honestly, TV series take a lot more time for me to do just because instead of watching a two, three hour movie, I have to watch sometimes, you know, 10 to 15 hours. That's a lot more watch time and that's a lot more researching for plot holes. But once all that work is done, it's pretty similar between movies and TV shows. I basically treat a pitch meeting for a TV show as if the season was a movie. Because honestly, that's how a lot of studios treat streaming series now. Kind that's of true. just like one story told over eight episodes. A lot of them could mm. have been really good tight movies, but they put filler in because streaming series are popular now. What's your favorite mm. YouTube channel besides your own, of course? Just curious little smiley face, little f emoji <laughs> person. Um, one creator that I've been watching for a while and I absolutely love is Joel Haver. That's a channel where I watch everything he uploads. I love what he's doing. It's very creative, very funny. So check out his stuff. You've probably seen his stuff around, uh, but yeah, he's, he's really good. No Has your recording is. setup changed slash evolved much since you started pitch meetings? Much love, heart, little heart emoji, little organ that pumps Blood. Uh, it honestly hasn't, <laughs> it hasn't changed much at all. I'm still using the same camera that I started pitch meetings with, which is just this little thing here. These lights are <laughs> relatively new just because the old ones broke because they were too old. And this green screen is not very big. And I've thought about getting a bigger, nicer one and stuff, but I know I kind of like that it's restrictive. When I'm shooting <laughs> on the green screen, I have like j this much room on either side to play with, which I think has actually been helpful for me in kind of developing my style of comedy. For example, I realized, you know, when I do like, oh, like that kind of, oh, neck movement, <laughs> I think that just came from me not having any room to move around on my green screen and wanting to put more <laughs> emphasis on things. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I have, this is a weird job. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Please leave me more questions down below and I apologize for this dog. Oh, that's perfect. I didn't know I needed that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's super informative. Like, I, I really enjoy his insight into his process. Because it's different than, like, a movie, you know? Like, we understand movies inside and out. I feel like even the most, I don't know, pedestrian person might understand movies just because of behind the scenes and how much that's pumped and all that information's really out there, but there isn't actually as much information on the the process of making YouTube videos. It's often just, like, self-produced. You're one, you're one-man band doing a whole bunch <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot going on there. The only di yeah. the only difference between him and most YouTubers is that there's another set of people who are who's actually uploading the video and dealing with all that you know business. He's mostly a, a solo show there. To me, it's hilarious that he's using the same old camera and he's using the same little green screen because I you know a lot of us I am especially guilty of this can get obsessed with like upgrading your situation. No one gives a shit. Like if they like you, they like you. And they don't care about you upgrading nothing. I think that sometimes as creators, we just for ourselves, we feel the need to upgrade our arsenal and whatnot just to like feel new for us. Yeah, I mean, it's also good to, you know, work with some good paints. Like I'm sure like, yeah. you know, Michelangelo when he was painting the Sistine Chapel, 
you know, if he could have had like a brush that was a little bit easier on the hands, you know, he'd upgrade that brush and still make beautiful things. But you don't have to have that brush. Yeah. You don't have to have the world's hottest camera. The fact that he's got that green screen, which limits his area, is interesting to me. And it does add to the comedy because all of his characters, in some sh way, have like this sort of, I don't want to say stiltedness, but there is, you can feel a sense of limitation to where they're moving and whatnot. And I just, yeah. I, th I think it does add to it. He's right. Like it adds, it helps the comedy. You know, I feel a little bad that I kind of know that now. It's kind of like the very first time I heard, you know, about, you know, the, the tale of Jaws, right? And and why the, the shark broke down and all that. I'm not going to get into that. But once you hear that and then you see the movie again, you can't unknow that knowledge. And now you see it and you're like, oh, Huh. Yeah. Now when I see his stuff, I'm gonna be like, well, you know, he was kind of restricted. But he, you know, he found he still made art out of out of a restrictive kind of thing and still made it hilarious. It's not gonna, you know, downgrade the comedy by no means, but I see what okay. you're saying about you know, knowing how the magic trick is now, like how it's done mm -hmm. and it not feeling as, you know, mesmerizing or or impressive now that you understand like the mechanics of the magic trick. Mm -hmm. But I think that Ryan George is just so funny, and he's yes. he, he finds ways to reinvent himself all the time with these new characters. Like, we watched another one of his videos earlier today, and I was <laughs> falling all over myself laughing. I don't care about the, the mechanics of it necessarily, uh, mm -hmm. beyond, like, just kind of his perspective on it. I just enjoy the characters he makes, and I enjoy his perspective on his own process. I think that he conveys it all in a very entertaining way. Even, like, these kind of throwaway videos about, like, his process, it's way profoundly more entertaining than most BTS of anything else that's out there just because he's so interesting you know yeah so anyways you guys thanks so much for hanging out hopefully you enjoyed that I'm Jabby Kawai this is hey it's your boy Sintel peace out